Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. So as you can see today, I'm in the driver's seat and there's nobody in the passenger seat. All that's with me is Fudge and he's back there. So yes, Fudge and I are going on a solo motorhome trip. So I'm hoping this vlog might be useful for people, men and women, who are thinking about motorhoming by themselves. Now, as you know, I was a caravanner before. I used to tow a big eight foot wide caravan no problem, absolutely loved it. But I don't think I'd have gone caravanning by myself simply because I would have found it. Well, when I say I wouldn't have gone by myself, I wouldn't have gone with my great big eyes on Zoe, um, because it would have been quite a bit of hard work. If you had a smaller caravan, it's probably a lot more manageable. But to do all the security and the legs and all those bits, um, for me personally, I would have found that quite a lot of work uh, and it's not something I, I would have ever really considered doing. I know a lot of people do it and credit to them, obviously. Um, so now we've got the motorhome, I do feel this is so much easier, particularly for me. Um, this is just something I can do so easily. So what I'm doing is I'm going away for a couple of nights by myself. Um, I'm going up to Warwickshire. And I'm stopping at Summerswood Caravan Site. Summerswood is a site I've been to a few times. Really nice. It's adults only. I'm booked in there for a couple of nights. I've got a service pitch. Now, I didn't particularly want a service pitch, but that's what's available. So it's really an added bonus. It does make it really quite straightforward. If you don't know, a service pitch is a pitch that's got um, the water, electric and quite often TV hookup and also grey waste drainage right on the pitch. So you're not having to go far um, to empty, um, empty and fill up. So um, what I'm going to do is once I get to site, obviously, I'll, I'll show you the pitch and how I'm going to do everything. So I'm in the motorhome. Fudge is back there. He's strapped in. I've got a little bit of food. I've got a little bit of clean, fresh water in my fresh water tank. Um, I think I'm showing at 25%. It's a 140 litre tank. I always like to take some fresh water because en route, you don't know what's going to happen. If I had to stop for the loo, I've got water for the flush. If I had to have a drink or fudge needs a drink, I've got water. Or if something happened, and I ended up having to stay somewhere um, that I hadn't planned on for a night. I've got that water there. So I always like to go with about 25% of fresh. My grey waste tank, that's completely empty. Uh, my toilet cassette is empty. And when I get to Summerswood, I'll show you obviously uh, the bits that I'll be doing when I get there, hooking up and, and stuff like that, and I'll have a little look around the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the road. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to talk to you much en route because I'll be concentrating on my driving. I do apologise in advance about the sound quality because I've forgotten my microphone. So uh, I'm, I'm travelling to Summer's Wood from another site, so I'm already on site. And I haven't got my microphone, so I'm really sorry. Hopefully the sound quality will be OK. So if I don't see you en route, I'll see you as we arrive at Summerswood. You can see the arrival um, and then we'll get sorted. So hopefully if you're interested in solo motorhoming, you can see how I get on. And I always say if I can do it, you know, anyone can do it. Um, you just need a little bit of confidence just to give it a go. And if, if the worst happens and you just haven't got a clue, you just ask somebody because I'm not afraid to ask somebody for help. So, um, yeah, brilliant. Right. Let's crack on and I'll see you on the way to Summerswood. OK, so I've come off the motorways. I've come onto the A45 and then I've come onto another A road that's taking me towards Meriden. Um, I'm not sure which way your sat nav would take you but generally most of them, as far as I know, will bring you in this way. So it's quite a straightforward entrance into Summerswood. The roads are a good size, they're easy to navigate. And the sat nav's very helpful in getting me to the side. Okay, so you're going to take the first exit on the B4102. And Summerswood's just round the corner, we're only about a minute away. It's, uh, I think I was last at Summerswood in February 2020 when the Auckland, NEC was on. Turn left onto South Road. It's a really nice site, so I'm looking forward to getting back there and having a couple of quiet nights. So this is the entrance road. Taking next in. left onto South Road. You'll see the sign for Stonebridge Golf Course. That's the big black sign here. So watch out for that. 
and this is Summers Road. So if you swing in here, even if you've got, I mean, I've been here previously with the um, the Isonzo, my eight foot car wide caravan. Uh, really good site for arrive at your destination for fifth wheels or anything that's uh, that's large. So you'll see here the sign for Summerswood Caravan Park. So if we do a right hand turn here and there we go. The gates will open automatically. Take the next right, then take the next left. Okay, so the gate opens automatically during office hours. If it's not, then you have to, I think, make a phone call. So we'll drive in here. The reception's literally just on the left, these little red buildings. So I'll park up and go get us sorted out. Da da! Solo motorhoming. Hey, there we go. How easy is it? So, right, bear with me a second. I do apologise because Fudge will probably start crying now because he normally does when he gets somewhere. Right, we we'll get my mask. I'm going to go and check in. As far as I know, I'm on pitch 43. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go get checked in and then we'll have a drive around the site to the pitch so at least you can see um, the site. And then we should be able to get set up and I'll show you what I do when I get on the pitch. First thing I'd like to do is get a drink because I made a total schoolgirl error and um, I didn't have a can of Coke with me to drink, so I'm rather thirsty. You, are you thirsty, Fudge? Yeah, you stay there. Right, I won't be a minute. So there we go, I've been and checked in and yes, I'm on pitch 43, a fully serviced pitch. So what we'll do is we'll just make our way around the site and I'll turn you around. I know you always enjoy it when I just spin you around randomly. There we go. So once you've been to check in, You'll then venture onto the site. Obviously, it is five miles an hour, and as I say, this is an, an adults only site. Now, most of the sites, uh, most of the pitches, sorry, are hard standing with electric. Uh, they take tents, uh, they, they don't take tents, they take trailer tents, caravans, motorhomes, camper vans. Um, I think it was last year they started making a few more service pitches. Now, you can probably just see there to the right that is the shower and facility block and just to the left as we go around it there's a, a water point there and the chemical waste is at the service block again so the site's really nice it's um, very peaceful surrounded by trees there's a nice dog walk um, you can get out from the site onto Stonebridge golf course which is uh, a good little uh, spot if you like golf they also do really nice food there and there's also fishing next door on the other side of the site it's nothing to do with the site as far as I know but you can um, get a, a pass to go fishing if you like fishing so this is the top end of Summers Wood and as I say these are all hard standing with electric pitches I've not, I don't think I've stopped in this top end before. I tend to go for pitch 39 or for 40. Now these just on my left, these are some serviced pitches by the look of it. They've got some water taps, so you could have a service pitch up the top end. And then we'll venture down into the lower part of the site. Now there's another waste point just to the left there. So if you're up this end, there's a waste point there. And yeah, the service block again, so this is the other side to it, and I normally stay just uh, here on the left. I go on there normally, on that end pitch where that high my camper is, so that's where I normally am. And my pitch today is going to be just on the left-hand side after this caravan and Mitsubishi. So Spin you around again. Okay, so I've gone nose in. Ooh. Yes, Fudge, we've gone nose in. We've gone nose in, um, which I always do because my habitation door is on the right-hand side. Now, the pitches are fairly level. Um, the, the further back I've gone on this one, the more sort of my nose is up, which is a good thing because I'm normally nose down. So what I'm going to do is, when you arrive as a solo motorhomer, the first thing you want to do is either go to the water point, the fresh water point on the site, and put fresh water in your motorhome. 
Make sure you carry your own hose pipe. You can use either the blue food grade or just a normal hose, but you want to make sure you're carrying your own hose pipe because nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, there won't be a hose pipe and you won't get water into your motorhome. So take your own pipe. I've got mine. Now I've come straight to my pitch because I've got water on my pitch. If you're a solo motorhomer, a service pitch could be quite useful to be fair. Um, it might take the pressure off you um, having to do things when you first start out because when you arrive at the motorhome service point and there's people waiting to use it or it's a bit busy, you can get a little bit stressed out and that's not where you want to be. So a service pitch for your first few outings could actually be a good idea because you tap your own. So I, what I've done is I've looked to see where the tap is on the pitch. It's over in the far corner uh, on the left as I look into my pitch and my water filler is on the left hand side of my motorhome. It's quite near the back and I know that my hose pipe's seven meters long so that's what I factored in. So I'm nosing the taps in that corner and I'll be able to get my hose pipe out. The next thing I want to do once I've got my water on board is then, and I've made sure I'm at the right um, distance from the tap, is level the motorhome. Now, leveling is going to be a little bit harder with, um, with just one person if you have to use ramps. I've got my little leveller, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on a bit of the floor that I know is level. So just one minute, I'm just going to dive down here. Right, my back's still in one piece. Okay, so to be fair, we're really level side to side. Nose, I could come up a tiny bit, but it's really probably not even worth getting the ramp out for that. Um, these little levelers I find really useful. There is an app as well that you can use on your phone. So I'm not actually going to have to do much leveling on this occasion. If you do, then what you do is get ramps. Um, if it's we need to bring the front up, then you best just, you can either put them in front of the tires and drive up carefully or put them behind and reverse back it's totally up to you um, if you buy yourself you either just gonna have to take it really careful so you don't nose dive off the front of them or off the back of them or you could set up a little camera if you had like a GoPro um, or something like that that you, a little camera that you can actually Bluetooth to your phone you could set your camera up and then watch it like that I mean it might be a bit going over the top but it's a, it's a suggestion if you buy yourself so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to get the electric on, get Fudge out because he's ready for some water um, and then we'll go from there. So yeah, I'll see you in a minute once I'm getting my electric cable out. Okay, so as usual, rain has started. So we're level and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hook the motorhome up. Now at the moment, um, like my fridge is actually on automatic so it'll turn itself on to gas and the fridge will kick in on that. So I'm going to get my electric hooked up. Now I've got a good sized garage um, and I keep the electric cable in here. It is on a winder. Now this is quite an interesting thing to note. Now this is a 25 meter cable, um, as you can see here. Now generally most electric cables are going to be 25 meters or 10 meters. Now being a bit weedy, I sometimes find this 25 meter um, quite a lot of cable to handle. I would prefer a 10 meter cable, but the problem I found quite often is you get to a site and the problem is, is that um, you're some way from the electrical bollard. Now on my pitch here, uh, the electric is, I don't know if you can see, but it's just over there, which is where I'm going to be venturing. So because of that, um, I'm going to have to uh, unwind my cable. My electric hookup is on the left hand side of the motorhome. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unravel this. Always make sure you completely unravel your cable um, because otherwise it can get very warm and you do not want that. So I'm going to get hooked up so we'll do that and, uh, and then we're another stage nearer being ready and fully set up. Okay, so what you need to do is always make sure that you plug your cable into your motorhome first. 
you don't want to plug the live end into your bollard and be walking around them with a live cable in your hand. Chances are nothing will happen, I don't know, I wouldn't want to test the theory, but always plug in to your leisure vehicle first of all and then head off to the bollard and plug yourself in last. Okay, so that's my electric hooked in. Um, I'm having to stand close to the camera because I said I hadn't brought my microphone, total rookie error. So we're hooked in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some water into the motorhome next. So I'll just go and get out the hose pipe and just talk through how to do that. I know it might seem very simple, but if it's your first time, you won't know what to do and it might be really helpful. So I'll just go get the hose pipe. So this is the pipe I've got. It's part of my Collapse Fresh Mini kit. So I'll just put that there and go and open up my water point, which is down here. So that's my fresh water open. Now do not lose this cap. Um, keep it somewhere safe. I'm going to put it there with the keys. So that is the, uh, the cap removed. It might be that your motorhome even has a 12 volt pump, in which case you can use an aqua roll if you're on a service pitch and you're not going anywhere, um, if, you're, um, if it just makes it easier for you. So this is my food grade hose. And as I say, this is seven meters long, um, which to be fair, has been ample um, for, for all the times we've used it. So let's get that out. Right, now whether it be, um, a tap on your pitch or whether it be a tap at a motorhome service point you're going to probably need an end like this because most of them are not going to have um, that the little bit looks like a nipple I don't know what it's called because I'm not really good at stuff like that as you all know so we're going to attach this to uh, the tap itself so what we're going to do is we're going to get that done first of all there we go I'm showing you the wrong end <laughs> sorry my life that end there we're going to pull this down and we're going to twist this onto this part of the service tap. So bear with me. Right, that's threaded on fine. So our tap, our tap is connected. And I'm going to unravel the hose and I'm going to head down there. I'm going to put a bit of water in. I'm here from, I've got two nights on the site. So I'm not going to overdo it because I don't want to waste water. I want to make sure I've got enough in the motorhome. So I'm going to do that and head down and put water in. Okay, so that should be enough water. So what we're going to do is turn the tap off and I'm just going to bring you down though so you can see uh, what I mean when I'm talking about the tap. If you then pull that down, it'll come away from there. This is the grey water disposal. Now when I open it to my grey waste, I'll show you how to use that. Now this is part of my kit that I put on. So all we need to do is just untwist that. So make sure you always take your tap bits away. So the tap was like that when I got here originally. And then I've just screwed that on and clipped that on. Um, and then that, just bob it back in there. Um, and then what we're going to do is literally, I'm going to drain the water from the hose as I go by tipping it up. And then it will go back in the bag. That's as hard as it is um, to get water. So I'm just going to pack this away lock the garage door so it's all locked away then i'm going to just dive inside and sort out the bits in there and um, get fudge out and get him a, get him a drink so there we go that that's how to set up it literally is like a five minute job water electric leveling if you need it um, and get your tables and chairs out so solo motorhoming it is quite easy it's really easy i can do it so brilliant right let's crack on to the next bit Okay, so I've come inside the motorhome and the electric is on. My fridge has gone on to electric, as you can see there, so that's fine. Obviously, all the lights are on. If I go to my control panel, um, just hopefully you can see that. Turn my pump on. That'll just pull the water through. So I'm now at 50% water because that's what I filled myself up to. 
the waste completely empty and my leisure batteries are good to go it might be flashing a little bit for you there quite possibly so it's currently 24 in here and, uh, and 20 outside so that's that sorted now fudge i've got fudge out now when you buy yourself here he is look are you ready for a walk fudge now when you buy yourself um it's, it's a little bit harder sometimes to do everything and sort um your dog or pet out what I do is I've got one of these stakes that's in the ground here. So you can see that there. Um, you do get a longer cable with them, but to be fair, I find it a little bit long. It wraps around his legs and it's a little bit harsh. Um, it's like wire, but plastic coated. Um, so I leave him on his lead. So he's um, always uh, on his two meter rule lead as well. Cause that's um, not a long lead. It's about, I don't know, a meter and a half, 1.8 meters. So what I'm going to do, I've got Fudge's drinks bowl here. Now these are another excellent, excellent product. These are um, collapsed dog bottles. So I'm going to just fill that up at the tap and then get him a drink. And then I'm going to get the toilet cassette prepared. So we'll get Fudge a drink and then I'll show you basically just how easy it is to prepare your toilet cassette. So yeah, bear with me a second while I get Fudge some water. Do you want to wait down there with everyone, Fudge? There you go. Right, there you go. Gently. Good boy. There you go, little man. Okay, so Fudge has had his drink. I still, I still haven't had mine. I'm not sure how that works. Right, toilet cassette. Mine's on the off side of my motorhome. It's here. Um, the flush works from the onboard tank. Normally, what I always do for me, when I empty it on my last trip um, or the last site I've been on, I always prepare it for one, the journey home, but two, the next trip. So. At the moment though, what I didn't do this time was do that so I could show you it um, on this trip. So what we're going to do, so the, the toilet cassette is empty. So literally pull that handle up and pull the cassette out. There is a further handle here. So if it is empty, it'll come out nice and easily. Look, just like that. And as I say, you know, my back's not great and I can lift these. Even when they're sort of two thirds full, I can carry one of these so it shouldn't be too much of a problem now the toilet cassette um what we're going to do is we're going to put the fluid in it now what i prefer to do is i prefer to do it from the top here so i slide that and open the flap up so there we go so we can see into the cassette and i'm going to put my fluid in there now the one i always use uh i've been using this since probably about the st start of last year 2020 January, February 2020 time. Um, it is the um, 40 shot range from Pro Shot. They've got a toilet cassette and then they've got the Eco. This is something I've been using just recently and it's absolutely brilliant. Smells really good, works really well. And for the price, depending on where you buy it, it's sort of from about £7.99 to £9.99. Don't pay more than £9.99. If you get it at the show, you can often get like two bottles. I think it's buy two, get one free was the deal last February at the NEC, if I remember rightly. Um, it's really good. You can do a little measure there. It, you just fill it 20 millilitres and it's got a little gauge on the side. So literally it is child's play. You squeeze it up to 20. This bottle will give you 40 doses, hence it's called 40 shot. That's the whole sort of idea behind it. So all I'm going to do is pour my 40 shot in there. That's my 20 mil. And that tiny little amount, believe me, will be all you need. It smells really nice. You can smell it in the motorhome. You can smell it if you've got a caravan, you can smell it in your caravan. Um, and that'll, that'll work. If the weather's warm, what I do and what they do recommend is you can double dose. So like if it's probably over, if it's in your mid to high 20s or you're abroad, I'd be using, I'd be using a double dose. So I'd be using 40 mil and then it'll become 20 shot. So yeah. Um, so that's in there. Now what you can do with your Thetford is put a little bit of fresh water in your Thetford as well. Um, I, to be fair, I always used to do that and I've, I've stopped doing it. Um, 
and it doesn't seem to make much difference but I'm not advocating that I'm just saying that is what I do so what we'll then do so the fluids in which is great close the flap slide that across and that's it and then lift up your Thetford hopefully I can do this with one hand what comes out can go back in there we go slide it in it's clicked in place there I close the hatch I lock that up with my key there we go so all that's left for me to do now is just secure yeah I'm not going anywhere fudge it's just secure my garage door um, from when I got my cable out so my electrics on my water's on I've got 50% water so that's 70 litres um, I've got to, everything set up. I'm going to get a drink and then we're going to go for a dog walk. We're we going to go for a walk, Fudge. Yeah, I'm going for a walk in a minute. Let me get a drink and then we'll we'll get sorted out. Um so yeah, so that's that's literally careful, careful little man. That's literally the journey here. Really easy, really enjoyable. And solo motorhoming should not be stressful. It should just be an enjoyable experience and that to me has been pretty straightforward and the more you do it the easier it will become i'm going to have a shower in a bit on site and then i'm going to have a quiet night and then my plan tomorrow is to do a couple of bits on site and hopefully get some fish and chips tomorrow night down in meriden if i do i'll take you with me and we'll uh, we'll give them a quick review so yeah so there we go so i'll just let you have a quick look around summer's wood I say these are some of the um the service pitches that we're on now there's some big big pitches down there if you've got like a big fifth wheel or rvs they're normally down there and the yeah it's okay fudge and the, the gates there that we came in there's a barrier I don't know if you can see it's just there it's a barrier code for that and then this is the rest of the site so it's fairly quiet and peaceful today obviously the weekend's just finished so people have ventured home but it's a lovely site say you're so close to Birmingham um, and all these other various places that are nearby because it's quite built up it's a really nice quiet peaceful site um, and um, a nice very very dog friendly some nice little walks as well with the dogs so there we go I'll waffle on no more um, and I'll catch you a bit late bit later on my solo trip I feel like a proper little adventurer see you in a bit hello so i arrived on site at summer's wood last night uh fudge and i had or oh, yesterday afternoon fudge and i had a nice evening we had a really good walk and our good friend andrew ditton was in the area so we got in touch and we met up with andrew and dougal and we had a walk around uh, past the golf course and around the site so i had a really nice evening actually and then we were fairly early to bed weren't we fudge um and then this morning we've got up and we've been um doing some bits on site today somebody actually mentioned about motoring by themselves and how you look at your ramps and i said yesterday when i arrived that you either know how good your ramps are and how far to go up or you could set up a little camera but what i've also when i've looked at it today one thing i thought was if you're in your driver's seat which would be here you could leave the door open a little bit and actually lean down and be able to see um the wheel and you'll be able to see yourself drive up the ramp so i'm going to try that myself but i think that could actually be a method that works obviously if you are a solo motorhomer and you've got your own method please let me know um because you may you may have the answer so i've been to the meriden fish and chip shop and my god look at the size of this so this is my hand these are my fish and chips the fish looks like a whale so i'm not entirely sure where that was uh, caught from I must say, they taste pretty amazing. The chips are extremely good. And that fish looks a whopper, so... Mmm. Meriden Fish and Chip Shop. I've got to give it a rating. The batter's looking good as well. So... Oh, yeah. These are a strong eight. Maybe more. So there we go. I'll catch you in a bit. Okay, so I've had a really good couple of days at Summer's Wood and it's now time to go home. Um, all good things come to an end. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to basically um, 
you know, pack the motorhome away, ready for, for setting off. So I've put everything away inside. The main things I need to do now is firstly, I need to um, switch my control panel off so it's all off. I need to hook, um, unhook my electric cable. You saw me put it out when we got here, putting it away. I'm going to unplug from the bollard first, wind it round the cable and then put it into the garage. I'm not going to show you that bit simply because you, you saw me put it out. We're just going to do the reverse. And then I'm going to drive up to the motorhome service point here at Summers Wood. I'm not going to empty on my pitch. I could do. I could use the flexi grey pipes that I've got and do it under the grey waste. But I want to show you how to use, obviously, the service points on site because that's generally where uh, you and I'd normally be ent uh, emptying. And then I'll empty the toilet cassette and then we'll be uh, we'll be on our way. Fudge and I will be heading off. So, um, yeah, so I'll get unhooked with the electric and then I'll see you at the service point. So I've arrived at the waste disposal at Summers Wood and this is it, just so you can see it. So this is also the motorhome service point. So as you can see here, we've got a drinking water tap. And what I do like is there's already a hose pipe attached. Now, obviously, if you wanted to use your own, I did ask the site and they say you can attach your own, but there's a hose pipe there so you can put fresh water in. And then they've got their grey waste here. So I've pulled up at the service point. My grey waste is on the back left-hand side or near side of the motorhome. You can see that there. And to, to reach that, they provide this grey pipe. So this is going to make it a little bit easier for us. I've also got flexi pipes, which are um, another thing that I use. So what I'll do is I'll fix this onto here. I've got a tap under here. So I shall turn that. I don't know if you can see the tap or not. I'll give that a turn and we'll be emptying out the grey waste uh, and, and ready to head home. So this, this setup here at Summers Wood is really easy. Some sites have um, a waste disposal that you can just drive over. That's really easy as well. Um, so I'll do this and we'll get the grey waste dumped out and then it's time to empty the toilet and we're literally then on the road. So I'll just... Right, that's the grey waste done. So as I say, I mean, I do have the flexi pipe, so I could have emptied on my pitch, but I've used um, the actual motorhome service point simply because there's um, the pipe there. So it's up to you, depending on if you've got a service pitch or if there's a, a motorhome service point. The next thing I'll do is take out the toilet cassette. Now you saw me when I arrived, how I, um, I set the, the um, cassette up. Now again, once I've taken the cassette box out, this is where I'm going to be coming. So it says chemical toilet waste. So when you come to a waste point, you will bring it over and it, different sites have different types, but here we can see that we're just going to be lifting this lid. And it is just almost like a toilet. You just literally pour your waste into there and then sometimes they'll have a flush and they'll also have a hose pipe the hose pipe is so you can rinse out your um there's the flush on there look there's also a hose pipe so you can rinse out your cassette so it's clean for the next time and you can give the uh, the loo a wash down if you've spilt anything always clean up after yourself because let's be fair it's uh, it's pretty disgusting if you don't so please just always give it a little wash um, so that's it. So I'm just going to go back to the motorhome now, get my cassette and get that emptied and then get on the road. So let's get that done next. So here we go. So my kept cassettes open and I'm just going to pull it out again. Now, obviously it's a little bit heavier than when we arrived, but if you pull it out now, the cassette, this handle will pull out, sorry, this handle does pull out. So you can either carry your Thetford cassette or you can wheel it along um, like a little trolley behind you. So if it is a bit heavy, you don't have to lug it over there. You can just wheel it. So let's get that over to the loo and get it emptied. Right, so I'm landed over here with the, the loo. Now, what, what you do is 
turn the handle so it's like that handle take off your end sorry like that and then you're going to be pouring this into the toilet itself so i'll see if i can i can just do that i'll just put you I'll just put you there you don't need to see what's in here right so i've emptied it i've given it a rinse a couple of times i'm just going to put the end on back like that and twist that around and it's ready to go back in the motorhome as i mentioned before i'll just take you with me as i mentioned before you um i normally prime mine ready for my next trip away so normally i'd be putting another dose of um 40 shot in there today i'm just heading home i've had a very long day it's been a really good day but it's been a long day so i'm going i'll do that at home um ready for my next trip so we'll just slide this back in um and then that's uh, my work here is done so so that's the box back in it's locked it's clicked in there close that up and then always make sure that you've uh, you've locked that and there we go now I'm going to go give my hands a quick wash in the loos um, and then I will uh, be on my way. So I'll just go get my hands a wash and then I'll be back with you. So there we go, that has been solo motorhoming um, at Summers Wood, which has been really good. I've had a great visit, the site has been lovely. Um, hopefully that's been a little bit used to you if you're thinking about solo motorhoming, uh, whether you're a man or a woman, and just basically sort of how it how it happens really there's other bits that i could have shown you such as getting the canopy out and um a few other bits but maybe that's one for another time as well if you found it useful please let me know um or is there anything you'd like to see um further then again let me know but yeah just something a bit different i've really enjoyed it um it's been great the weather's been great the fish and chips the fish and chips in the end i gave them an eight and a half last night I underestimated them because a bit later on I warmed what I'd, what I'd left, I warmed them up and um, they were a nine and a half so tremendous Meriden Fish and Chip Shop nine and a half, uh, definitely one to try. So there we go, um, thank you very much for joining me on the trip, I appreciate it. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.